Unit 4, second video lecture, Phylum Annelida, the Segmented Worms. Segmented worms are tryptoblastic, meaning that they have three germ layers. They're coelomates, with their body cavity being formed between the endoderm and the ectoderm. While they don't, still don't have a skeleton structure, they still have a fluid-filled hydrostatic skeleton. Annelids exhibit bilateral symmetry, very similar to flatworms and roundworms. They have a complete gut with two openings, exhibit cephalization, undergo protostome development, and have larval stages similar to certain mollusks. Given the fact that these, we have similar embryological development, leads scientists to believe that annelids and mollusks share a common ancestor. Most annelids are free-living. They are terrestrial, can live in freshwater or marine environments, and annelids are found worldwide. The annelid digestive system is made up of a foregut, a midgut, and a hindgut. There's a pharynx and esophagus, very sim similar to humans. And they have an epithelial digestive tract, which means that they use mu uh, uses the muscle movements of the body to move th food throughout the body, throughout the gut. They have a stomach-like midgut, which is made up of the crop and gizzard. They have a long intestines. They have a long intestine, which is used to digest and absorb nutrients, nutrients, and an anus for waste to be excreted. The crop, which is this first part here, is a storage place for food before entering the gizzard. The gizzard is a muscular sac containing hard particles that help grind soil and food before they enter the digestive tract. Nutrients are absorbed from the intestines and undigested material is passed out through the anus. Our segmented worms have a circulatory system. It's a closed system with muscular blood vessels and aortic arches that pump blood. This is the circulatory system takes in oxygen and gives off carbon dioxide. And this occurs through the skin. The circulatory system contains five hearts that pump blood throughout the body. There is a dorsal blood vessel that pumps blood to the anterior part of the body and a ventral blood vessel that brings blood to the posterior end. If you notice, earthworms also possess nephridra, like mollusks, in almost every segment. Here, cellular waste products are collected and transported out of the body. The brain, or the nerve ring, at the anterior end and two nerve, dors nerve cords, dorsal and ventral, make up the nervous system of the segmented worms. Worms use muscles to move. There's strong circular and longitudinal muscles. The longitudinal, you can see, run with these muscles that run long ways, so their contraction is long and short. And the circular muscles, you can see here, would be responsible for side-to-side -side movement. Then there are thick and thin muscles here. Annelids also possess setae which are these tiny bristles that push into soil and anchor the worm during movement. They actually extend out of the body and are little hair-like projections that are used to grip the soil. The fluid within each cell segment that creates the rigid support system is that hydrostatic skeleton that we've discussed earlier. Annelids exhibit both sexual and some species will can regenerate with asexual reproduction.
after fertilization, the satellum, okay, this part here that we can see on the outside, forms a slime tube where the sperm and eggs join. This will eventually become a cocoon for the external development of the embryo. So even though there is internal fertilization, the embryo develops externally or outside of the body. We have three major classes. The first class is polychaetes. These are often marine species with specialized heads and sense organs. They possess peripodia, which are paired appendages that are used for locomotion or respiration. Some of these worms also have gills. They also have seti and often have eyes. Our second class is made up of mostly freshwater, few marine and wet terrestrial leeches. They have flattened bodies with specialized mouths. The circulatory system is enhanced by the cloam and connective tissue. A lot of gas exchange occurs through the skin. These leeches actually have two brains, two sets of ganglia, one anterior and one smaller posterior. And finally, our last class, which is our earthworms, mostly are ter terrestrial and freshwater. There are very few marine. And movement is done by peristatic motion.